So in the first video, we talked a little bit about R2R networks and the little schematic I drew up here to be able to attach an R2R network onto my EPM1270. If we take a quick look here at the board layout for the EPM1270, we're going to be plugging the board into this connector here. The Verilog code is written to use this specific set of pins. Here is a quick picture of the board. Actually plugged into the EPM1270 and we got a little closer view here of the board again in the socket. So with the board in the socket, or in the connector here, let's go ahead and take a look at the Verilog code for the board. So the Verilog code is just a pretty simple little piece of code. Uh, in our module we've got a three input outputs, a clock to pick up the 50 megahertz clock uh, from the board, an output I'm using to drive the four onboard LEDs. It just gives me a visual indication that the, the system is running. And uh, eight outputs that I've named R2R. We're creating a 26-bit counter here as a register. Uh, in this case, as I said, it's 26 bits. Uh, that register on every uh, negative edge of the clock is incremented by one, so this is a 26-bit field, and it's adding just a binary one as a 26-bit field to this 26-bit counter. The LEDs are tied to uh, the least significant bits on it, so I can see, my, again, activity. I see a binary up count on the LEDs. I've knotted these simply because to light the LED, the pin's got to be low, and so uh, when this bit in the counter is high, that knots it to a low and then LED gets lit. But the real meat here is the uh, R2R network, is this R2R register that's 8 bits. Uh, I've created a local parameter named MSB that is the first pin or the first bit in that counter that I want the R2R network hooked to. So in this case uh, R2R bit 8 is connected to uh, M the counter bit position 11 and 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, etc. all the way down. If you look at the assignment editor we can see that in this case I've taken the R2R network and I've connected it to these pins 42 to 45 and 48 to 51 and if we look at the EPM1270 board you can see that again pins 42 to 45, 48 to 51. So board's built, it's plugged in, it's connected to those I.O. pins. We've got our little bit of Verilog code here, we've got a 26-bit counter that gets incremented, and we've got the R2R network connected to it. So I've gone ahead and connected my Rigol, uh, or not my Rigol, my Roden Schwartz oscilloscope up um, to the uh, EPM1270 board here. I've got uh, channel 1 on it connected up to the analog output from the R2R network and a ground reference and then I've got eight channels of the logic analyzer hooked up to the eight pins that are being driven here. I'll give you a little closer look at this. Again, scope's hooked up and the logic analyzer is plugged onto the same set of pins we have uh, right here. If we take a look at the, uh, the oscilloscope output itself, we can see the digital channels where we, we, we've got the least significant bit to the most significant bit. A couple things you might observe here is the yellow here is of course the output of the R2R network and it's swinging from, well we've got the min and max, uh, just I think we too, well it's swinging about 3.2 volts peak to peak. Uh, so we can see the binary up count here. If you notice on an edge transition here where this drops from a 1 to a 0, you will see negative going edges on all the clock signals here. Let's see if I can expand this out a bit. Maybe make that a little easier to see. You do see some of the inherent issues with an R2R network, this roll off uh, as that edge happens, but all of those negative going edges of course line up here. You can see noise in the signal as various transitions are happening. So it, you know, as I transition from a 3 decimal to a 4 decimal, uh, 2 bits go low, 1 bit comes high, and it's an imperfect device. The resistor values and stuff are imperfect, so you don't get a perfectly smooth line here. 
but that's to be expected. Um, if we shift along here, where this begins we can see where they all go negative here and then as we start to count up it'll start to swing back up and of course as the binary out uh, the binary count increases the output of the R2R network increases so uh, there is the scope output so you can visualize it binary up count R2R network output and again, we'll just jump back into the code here. We've got the R2R network connected, in this case, to these eight bits of this counter, of this register here that I'm naming counter. It's being incremented on every clock cycle by one, and it's just creating a nice binary up count uh, that is assigned to these pins on the device, or the R2R network, and ultimately you know, to the network itself. So hopefully this made a bit of sense. Uh, in the third part of this video, I'm going to get a uh, sine wave lookup table set up, and I'll be using this binary up count as the inputs to that lookup table and the outputs will represent a sine wave, and we should see a sine wave being drawn here. Anyhow, I'll wrap this up quick for the second video, and we'll talk soon.